This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the top 10 problems on a gas furnace package unit where the system just does not produce any heat. So we're going to be taking the cover plate off and going over each of the problems and causes coming up. Problem number one is just that you don't have any power to the package unit. So this is the outdoor disconnect box, and in this case you see that the the non-fusible disconnect is in the off position, so it's not touching the contacts. Whereas if we flip it in this way, it will be touching and it acts as a switch in order to give power to the package unit. You also may not have any power here. And so let's just do a quick test. And so in this case, we do have power. We're reading 246 volts. You may not have any power if the breaker is shut off or we're tripped. And then also you could have a fusible disconnect here and you need to check the resistance across each of the fuses individually in order to see if they're good. They should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. You can also take the cover plate of the package unit off and you can test for voltage at the contactor, but you can just simply look over here and see if your LED light is lit on your control board. Problem number two is either a bad thermostat, bad thermostat batteries, or a bad thermostat wire for the package unit and so we have our wiring diagram right here and that shows us what the function of each one of these color wires are so now we're going to go ahead and do some testing we're going to use some jumpers in order to test these thermostat wires but i would just want to go over the function in this particular unit this brown wire is the common from the transformer the red wire is the 24 volt power from the, the transformer and then you have your green wire that's for fan and your yellow wire that's for air conditioning and the white wire that's for heat and so the job of the thermostat is to act as a switch in the heat setting right here where we have heat on. What it's going to be doing is touching R, red, and W, white, together. So in the thermostat, it should be already touching right here. So if it is touching, then this inducer motor should be the very first thing that turns on in the sequence of operation for heat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump from point A to point B, and you could even do that with just a wire nut, in order to see if the inducer motor turns on. So now that's running and we know that our thermostat or the thermostat wire is the problem. There's another test that we could do. So you got to remember that when you're using jumpers or even just wire nutting these together, you're bypassing this thermostat wire and the thermostat itself. So the batteries, if, if they're weak, that connection is not going to take place in the thermostat. And the other thing is this thermostat, maybe it got weed whacked, maybe a mouse had chewed it or something like that. So this thermostat wire itself may need to be replaced or at least just one of the wires may need to be switched out here with this white wire and at the thermostat in order to get this to work. I'm going to do one more test and that's with the multimeter. If you don't have power to this package unit or you don't have power to the transformer, then you're not going to have 24 volts to even signal for heat to turn on. So I'm just going to measure real quick between the hot and the common and you see that we do have power 28 volts. Now we're going to move on to problem number three. Problem number three is either that the inducer motor is seized internally or it has a bad capacitor and that's if you do have power to the inducer motor itself. And so quickly you can easily test to see if it is seized by just trying to press on this right here or back here where the uh, fan blade is. And so you can see that this one is not seized and you can check for voltage with your multimeter here. And I have other videos down in the description section below on how to test your capacitor. In this case, this inducer motor is not equipped with a capacitor because it's a shaded pole inducer motor. So those types of motors do not have a capacitor. Problem number four is that this inducer motor wheel could be rotted. And so on these 80% efficient outdoor package units, you have a fully uh, metal inducer motor area and so this wheel could be completely rotted and it could even look like this and so the whole point is that the inducer motor is not going to be able to pull the combustion air down low at the burners and push the exhaust out of the unit so that could be the problem or you could have this little metal port is clogged and so this tube leads up to a pressure switch up here and so this pressure switch may not be able to read that this inducer motor is working properly so it could be that little port right there and so what you can do is you can unclog it with just a piece of thermostat wire 
The other issue is it could be the pressure switch itself. So these are all connected, the inducer motor, the port, the tubing, and the pressure switch. And so I have another video down in the description section below all about the pressure switch. I've got another one on eight possible problems with an inducer motor, so make sure you check them out down below. Problem number five is an issue with the spark ignition. And so you have this insulated wire coming from the control board up here and it goes through a piece of plastic, another piece of plastic or rubber, another one here, another one here, another one here. The whole point is to not have this wire rub up against the ground frame and be exposed. Because if you have a 10,000 volt spark igniter, it's going to jump from here to the ground instead of over at the front of the burners. So this is normally sitting like this, but I've pulled it out so that you can see the front. So it should be jumping right across here in order to ignite the gas. Let me give you a quick example of what this should look like. And it may just be buzzing continually on a package unit, but this little spark I'm going to show you is a little bit weaker. So if that spark ignition is not taking place down in the front right here, it may be taking place somewhere else and you just want to locate that area and then you're going to have to turn the power off and install a new wire. Problem number six is when you have spider webs clogging the, the orifices right here or the front of the burners. And so you can see this little spider web right here right over top of these orifices. And so that's where the gas comes out of the tube at and enters into these burner assemblies. But you got to make sure to clean all this stuff out as a preventative maintenance for these systems because they're all outside and you have louvers basically so that the combustion air can come into this unit and so you have a lot of insects in here that can clog this stuff up. One of the indicators of this problem is that only one or two of these several burners are lit and so that's a big problem. Problem number seven is when you have the front of the burner tubes may be sealed shut due to rust so this will be closed off completely and so maybe you may have one two burners lit and then their other ones are not lit because these channels are rusted solid you could also have where these have opened up so much that the flame does not travel across from one burner to the other so let's just go ahead and let this thing run and see the problem So a common problem with these are that these little channels rust shut and so you have to use a wire brush so you turn the power off and then you take the burner tubes out and you'd clean them out with a brush. Now this has already been brushed once and what happens is every time you're brushing you're brushing metal away from the surface right so these channels end up getting bigger and the metal gets thinner and so these then need to be replaced. Here's another example of some burners now these ones you would not try to clean them, you would just replace them. And in this case, you can see that the, the channel has opened up. And so you have your flame rollout switch here, that's a protection device. So that should open up or hopefully would open up if this were a problem, but you're gonna to need to replace these every once in a while on a package unit because these are exposed to the elements outside in this outdoor unit. And so sometimes you could also have an issue where if these open up or move, uh, maybe due to the weight of the, the gas line or something like that, they may, the channels may come off from each other. So this is a big deal. So you definitely need to address this. Problem number eight is when the burners are lit and then it shuts off after a few seconds. If the burners ignite over here and travel across their heads over to this side, and then the flame proofing process, which in this case you have a flame rod and the flame rectification process, if it doesn't sense that there's a flame here, then it's gonna shut the burners off after a few seconds. So uh, some of the problems that there could be with the flame rectification process is a bad ground to the package unit. You could also, with the power off, go ahead and clean this rod with steel wool. It could have a bunch of uh, carbon buildup on it because you gotta remember anytime that the package unit has power to it, you're gonna have voltage on this rod, so make sure not to touch it in that instance. But if you wanna learn more about flame rectification, we've got videos linked in the description section below. Another reason that the flame might be going out is maybe that the exhaust is open here on the side and that you have wind coming in and it's fighting against the inducer motor and it's causing the pressure switch to trip and, and open up. In this case, you see that that's not going to happen because there's no opening here on the side. You have an opening on the, on the bottom and the top. Now I'm going to show you the burner's lighting and then shutting off due to a problem.
And so this system may try to ignite several times before locking out for a period of time based on the, the outdoor unit control board, but that's what it would look like. Problem number nine is when the blower motor is not turning on and that may be due to a bad capacitor or maybe you have an ECM blower motor where it does not have a capacitor and so maybe this module has failed on the end of the blower motor. And so that's an issue because what's happening is you have your heat exchangers heating up and then your, your blower motor is going to be pushing the airflow down and across this heat exchanger which is right behind here into the supply duct. So what's going to happen is the furnace is going to overheat and this temperature sensor which is a high temperature limit is going to open up. Now if a PSE blower motor like this which requires a capacitor does not turn on just replacing the capacitor may not be good enough because the, the blower motor may have sustained damage. So it's just something to think about. You may end up having to replace both the, the blower motor and the capacitor. Problem number 10 is when you have a crack in your heat exchanger. So in this case, you see we have a crack in each one of these two heat exchangers. And so what's going to happen is this burner assembly is located right on the other side of this wall. So if you have your blower motor pushing air down into this area and the heat exchanger is back here, the air is going to be pressing down into these cracks and coming back out through the opening. So, the, so basically you're pushing the flames back out this way. So you have the flames popping out this way and this switch trips. You want to make sure not to just keep pressing the manual reset on this. You need to replace these heat exchangers because you're going to get carbon monoxide in the building. And that's a, that's a real serious problem. So now you can see an up close view of this hole and the reason that this hole is going like this is because it ended up rotting through right on the weld seam. So that tends to happen on these package units. Now that we covered those top 10 problems, I wanted to give you a quick couple tips in reference to the airflow and the ductwork. One is if this is exposed to the elements, it's going to end up rotting. And so if this is your supply duct, it could just be blowing air outside or if the return could be sucking air from outside. In some cases, you may have to make a shroud to cover both of these. Also, where you're penetrating through the building, it may be siding instead of stone like this. And so uh, you could end up having an animal go into the crawl space and ripping into your uh, flex ducts and collapsing them. That could be an issue. And also with these package units, people tend to forget that the air filter is going to be located typically inside the building. And so you need to go ahead and replace that and make sure that's a clean air filter in order to get your proper airflow across that heat exchanger coil so this unit does not overheat. So I hope some of this information helped you be able to diagnose a package unit and remember that we have individual component troubleshooting videos linked down in the description section below. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of articles, quick tips, calculators, quizzes, the podcast, and we also have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, quick reference cards and workbook and, and PowerPoints and posters for teachers. So there's a bunch of resources over at acservicetech.com. And hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.